Hello everybody and welcome back to a Martin Court Advent 2015. Today it is time to talk about my top three games of 2015. Again, in no particular order, save for my number one game, which was not released this year. So, just letting you know. The first game I'm going to talk about is Dragon Ball Xenoverse. I loved that game. That game is great. The soundtrack is one of the best soundtracks I've heard in a video game in a long time. Um, I actually actively listen to it on its own. It's really good. Going in with absolute no knowledge of Dragon Ball outside of who Goku is, um, I feel like I was able to really enjoy the game. Um, probably not as much as somebody who's a diehard fan of the game would enjoy that, but I feel like I got a lot out of it. I really enjoyed uh, Margo Han. I think um, the, the whole make your own character and really do this thing, I connected with that character. I think Margo Han was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, it was just, it, the combat is so much fun. I love the combat in that game. It's so free and you're just like zipping around and punching and it's so great. I want like that style of combat in like a Superman game or something like that, but that would never happen because Superman's broken. So, but it's, it's such a, it's such a fun game. Frustrating at times to be sure. And when I played it, that final boss was ridiculously easy because he bugged out on a wall but it was still a lot of fun. So Dragon Ball's universe, if you can pick it up, I cannot recommend that highly enough. Even if you don't know Dragon Ball like I do, you could still have an absolute blast of a time in that game. The next game is easily the best episodic game to come out this year, bar none. Life is Strange is my, is my number two. Um, actually, yeah, that's number two. Let's have that be number two. I like this game a lot more than, I, than Dragon Ball, but I love Dragon Ball, so you know I like Life is Strange quite a bit. Even if it has some stupid moments, let's be honest, what episodic game doesn't, and even if Warren's an idiot, it's still a great game. In terms of, like, story and the characters and actual choices, someone making a difference, um, and having you feel like there's different, there's changes occurring in the world, um, I, I really dug that, especially compared to the kind of general garbage that Telltale just kind of dribbled out this year. Game of Thrones and Tales from the Borderlands and the Minecraft thing that's currently going on. Not really strong stuff, but thankfully, fucking Square Enix and Donut just swooped in with Life is Strange and reminded us all of why episodic games are incredible. So thank you guys very much, and I am very excited for, I don't think it's Life is Strange 2, but Vampire out of, um, out of Don't Nod should be a lot of fun. It's a completely different type of game, but I'm still looking forward to it, because these guys know what they're doing. And probably, uh, it wasn't a surprise for me when I went back and looked at my games that I played this year, um, but it's, it might be a surprise for you, because I think at this point the game is at least two years old. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is my number one game of 2015. I fucking love that game so fucking much. You want to talk good music? It doesn't come better than Revengeance. It's this combination of really awesome shit going down and really dumb shit going down. It's so great. I loved Revengeance. I loved it. I bet Phantom Pain is, is, you know, awesome as well. I just didn't play it, so I can't have it on the list, but Revengeance, oh my god. I, I love it so much. I love being a cyborg ninja fucking Raiden. I mean, this game, I love this game so much, I bought the sword. If that doesn't show my love for this game, I don't know what will. I have Raiden's sword. It's in the other room, like, next to my bed, in case people break in at night. I break out this, like, hyper, um, high frequency blade is shing, just cut things in half. Oh man. Plus, that game probably has some of the best DLC ever, where you play as Blade Wolf and Sam. Those are amazing DLC missions. They're incredible. I love them. So, I've, I've got to give it to Revengeance. Now, I do recognize that there were a lot of great games released this year that I simply haven't played. Fan of Pain is one of them. Star Wars Battlefront is another. Fallout 4. Um, stuff like that. Um, Undertale. I know that probably a lot of you are going out there and like, Undertale's the best! I haven't played it, so I can't have it on the- I haven't beaten it as well. So, you know, I recognize there are lots of great games. But for me, and what I actually played this year, it did not come better 
than Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That game is an absolute gem, and Platinum is the best. Love you, Platinum. Where's my wonderful 101 PC port? Maybe never, because Nintendo. So yeah, that is my game of the year, Revengeance. I know, I know, it's super good. You haven't played it, you gotta play it. It's super good, it's super dumb and I love it. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I think tomorrow we will talk about, uh, let's talk about my favorite album of the year. I would do a movie one, but Star I haven't seen Star Wars yet, so I can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. I don't. I don't know. You know. I can't. I could say what it is now, but chances are it's probably gonna be Star Wars. So, see you all tomorrow. We'll talk about some music. Have a good one, guys.